Welcome to worship with the community of St. Mark's Lutheran Church by the Narrows. In this midsummer time when the earth is putting forth so much vegetation, when the bushes and trees are bearing fruit, we have scripture readings today that also remind us that we are created by God to bear fruit, to bear fruit in our lives that provide for the world the gifts that God has given us to share. And we have a parable today that Jesus tells about how those gifts are meant to be shared with all people, even those that we might never imagine a relationship with, that God breaks down those barriers by giving us gifts to share, that we might help each other, that we might bring each other into wholeness. We'll remember that throughout the service today and also in this opening song that I invite you to sing with me now. To the depths of the sea, creations revealing her majesty. And the colors that fall to the fragrance of spring. Every creature unique in the song that he sings. All exclaiming, indescribable, uncontainable. You place the stars in the sky and you know them by name. You are amazing, God. All powerful, untamable, all struck, we fall to our knees as we humbly proclaim. You are amazing, God. Who has told every lightning bolt when it should go? Or seen heavenly storehouses laden with snow? It's source to its light Yet conceals it to bring us the coolest of night None can found Indescribable, uncontainable You place the stars in the sky and you know The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. O Lord God, your mercy delights us, and the world longs for your loving care. Hear the cries of everyone in need, and turn our hearts to love our neighbors with the love of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The first reading is from Psalm, chapter 28, verses 1 to 20. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. 
My God, I put trust in you. Let me not be put to shame, nor let my enemies triumph over me. Let none who look to you be put to shame. Rather, let those be put to shame who are treacherous. Show me your ways, O Lord, and teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth and teach me, for you are the God of my salvation, and you I have trusted all the day long. Remember, O Lord, your compassion and love, for they are everlasting. Remember not the sins of my youth and my transgressions. Remember me according to your steadfast love. And for the sake of your goodness, O Lord, you are gracious and upright, O Lord. Therefore, you teach sinners in your way. You lead the lowly in justice and teach the lowly your way. All your paths, O Lord, are steadfast love and faithfulness to those who keep your covenant and your testimonies. For your name's sake, O Lord, forgive my sin, for it is great. Who are they who fear the Lord? You will teach them the way that they should choose. They shall dwell in prosperity, and their offspring shall inherit the land. You, Lord, are a friend to those who fear you and will show them your covenant. My eyes are ever looking to you, O Lord, for you will pluck my feet out of the net. Turn to me and have pity on me, for I am left alone and in misery. The sorrows of my heart have increased. Bring me out of my troubles. Look upon my adversity and misery and forgive me all my sin. Look upon my enemies, for they are many, and they bear a violent hatred against me. Protect my life and deliver me. Let me not be put to shame, for I have trusted you. The second reading for today is from Colossians, chapter 1, verses 1 to 14. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God, and Timothy, our brother. To the saints and faithful brothers and sisters of Christ in say, Grace to you and peace from God our Father. In our prayers for you, we always thank God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. For we have heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and of the love that you have for all the saints. Because of the hope laid up for you in heaven. You have heard of this hope before in the word of the truth, the gospel that has come to you, just as it is bearing fruit and growing in the whole world. So it has been bearing fruit among yourselves from the day you heard it and truly comprehended the grace of God. This you learned from Epaphras, our beloved fellow servant. He is a faithful minister of Christ on your behalf, and he has made it known to us your love in the Spirit. For this reason, since the day we heard it, we have not ceased praying for you and asking that you may be filled with the knowledge of God, God's will, and all spiritly wisdom and understanding, so that you may lead lives worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing to the Lord as you bear fruit in every good work and as you grow in the knowledge of God. May you be made strong with all the strength that comes from God's glorious power, and may you be prepared to endure everything with patience while joyfully giving thanks to the Father who has enabled you to share in the inheritance of the saints in the light. God has rescued us from the power of the darkness and transferred us into the dominion of his beloved Son, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel for this day is found in the Gospel according to St. Luke, the 10th chapter, beginning with the 25th verse. Just then, a lawyer stood up to test Jesus. Teacher, he said, what must I do to inherit eternal life? He said to him, what is written in the law? What do you read there? He answered, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind and your neighbor as yourself. And he said to him, You have given the right answer. Do this, and you will live. But wanting to justify himself, he asked Jesus, And who is my neighbor? Jesus replied, A man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell into the hands of robbers who stripped him, beat him, 
and went away, leaving him half dead. Now by chance, a priest was going down that road, and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. So likewise, a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him, passed by on the other side. But a Samaritan, while traveling, came near him, and when he saw him, he was moved with pity. He went to him and bandaged his wounds, having poured oil and wine on them. Then he put him on his own animal, brought him to an inn, and took care of him. The next day he took out two denarii, gave them to the innkeeper, and said, Take care of him, and when I come back I will repay whatever more you spend. Which of these three do you think was a neighbor to the man who fell into the hands of robbers? He said, The one who showed him mercy. Jesus said to him, Go and do likewise. The Gospel of the Lord. That parable that we just heard is one of the most well-known, I think, in the New Testament. So much so that we even have a good Samaritan law in our country, which provides protection to those who come to the aid of helpless people. In some ways, that familiarity presents a challenge because it makes it easy to assume that we all understand the full meaning of the parable for our lives. One very personal way to break that open is to ask, who do I identify with in the parable? In my case, an honest look at who I am often leads me to see myself in those two religious leaders who walked by the victim lying on the side of the road. From that perspective, then I hear the parable as a call to not only open my eyes and ears to the plight of needy people, but to change my way of life so that I don't resemble the priest and the Levite who failed to show mercy. When I go further and see myself as the Samaritan in the story, then I take it to the next step and remember that every person in need is my neighbor. But for me, the parable is broken open even wider when I'm able to see myself as the needy person in the story, the one who's totally dependent on the mercy of others. In that case, then, it's no longer about resourceful me reaching out to help them, but about me as a vulnerable human being who is dependent on the compassion and the generosity and mercy of God expressed through the words and deeds of people who reach out to me. As I thought about that this past week, my heart was filled with gratitude for people who have done that at every stage of my life. They have showered me with mercy and they have shown me the beautiful diversity that shines brightly in Good Samaritans throughout the world. One of the first people who came to mind for me is Ralph Hankey, my seventh grade Sunday school teacher. About midway through that school year, my father died of a heart attack, and I clearly needed the love and the mercy of people in that very tender time. It was Ralph who kindly invited me to go with him to the father-son banquet at our church that spring. It all seemed very natural to me because he did it in such a way that just made me feel like I was a treasured companion. I didn't know at the time that Ralph's son had died in a motorcycle accident some years earlier. When my mother shared that story with me, it made me even more appreciative of the quiet and the gracious way that Ralph included me in his life. In the years that followed, as I made my way through junior high and high school, there were countless others who showed mercy to me in life-giving ways. One of them was my Aunt Clara. As an older sister in a family of nine children, she had provided a lot of care for my father when he was a little child. And all of that love and attention got passed on to me then at a time when I truly needed it. Along with my mother, 
She affirmed me during those teenage years and inspired me. And with my uncle Wally, she made her house a second home for me in every way. And it all seemed so natural to her. It, it just carried me through those years in ways that fill me with gratitude today. As time progressed, those bearers of God's mercy for me became more and more diverse. And my memories of that last week took me to Madagascar, where I landed as an English teacher in my early 20s. My main interest in going there was to return to my childhood home. And the fact that I had no training at all as a teacher was not a deterrent to me. I'm sure that was very obvious to the Malagasy students who looked to me to help them pass the English language requirements that they needed for academic advancement. But supporting me rather than judging me was what they brought as gift. They helped me to grow and to learn as I went, and they also filled my house and my life with joy and laughter. It's something I remember every time I look at the picture that I took of a few of them that's in our fireside room at St. Mark's. That's the kind of generous hospitality that I experienced several years later again when my wife Linda and I went to live in a tiny village on the Adamawa Plateau of Cameroon. We were there to learn the Baya language so that we could support the efforts of the Cameroon Lutheran Church to increase adult literacy and to equip people for leadership in their local congregations. Our host family in that little village included a mother named Martha, who knew right away how dependent we were on her for so many things. Even our basic need for water was in her hands. In the early morning hours, she and other women from the village would walk to a stream and then return with large basins of water on their heads to supply the needs of their families. We were like babies, really, when it came to the language and to the knowledge of so many things that were important for life in that unique setting. But Marta drew near to us, and in her loving and merciful way, she mothered us into new life in her community. In truth, I have been needy in every stage of my life and ministry including my time with you at St. Mark's. I am not self-sufficient, and often I am not prepared or equipped to serve in a way that's needed. Among the countless people who have shown mercy to me, I thought last week of Roy Concilio, among those who I have met here at St. Mark's. As a gay man, Roy had prepared himself for pastoral ministry in the church at a time when the doors were still locked to that, and support was very, very hard to find. Thanks to Dick Moe, who also joined St. Mark's in his later years, Roy was given the opportunity to serve in various roles at Pacific Lutheran University. But the church remained closed to Roy, and he grieved that loss throughout his days. My Indebtedness to Roy comes from the way that he graciously helped me learn at an important time in my ministry what it means to see and acknowledge the hurt that people have experienced within the church and to commit ourselves to God's work of change and reconciliation. In my own need to learn and grow, Roy is also one of the many people who taught me how to die. When he learned that his illness was terminal, Roy allowed me to be a companion to him in ways that touched me very deeply. Days before his death, he gave me the communion set that he had kept as part of his own preparation for pastoral ministry. And I have used that for every communion visit that I have made since then. It always brings to mind the love and the mercy of God that Roy shared so freely. So on this day when we all hear the familiar parable told by Jesus, 
I invite you into a time of gratitude for all of the good Samaritans who have shown mercy to you in times of need. Let your heart overflow with thanks. And then, with all of us, welcome the commission of Jesus to go and do likewise, knowing that it does come with an edginess that can't be overlooked. We may end up reaching out to people who are already close to our heart, and that is all good. But the parable teaches us to see that neighbors in need may also include people who take us far beyond our own circles of comfort and familiarity and even beyond the barriers that we have of our biases and prejudices and fears. When that happens, when we are moved in that way, we know that we are being transferred, as St. Paul says in our second reading today, from the powers of darkness in this world into the reign of God's beloved Son. It is for this that we are made. And it is for this that I give thanks today. Amen.
We remember that the mercy that is referred to in our gospel reading today is mercy that originates with God. It is God who is merciful to us and gives us this gift to share. So we know that if we come to God with open hearts, God will be merciful and will forgive us. That gives us courage now to take some moments to remember what it is in our own lives that we bring to God for forgiveness and healing. In the mercy of God, Jesus Christ is given to us, and in him we have the forgiveness of all our sin. That is the promise of the gospel that I declare to you, that our sins are forgiven. In the name of God, our Creator, Christ our Savior, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We turn now to God in prayer with these petitions, and after each petition, your response is, your mercy is great. Good and gracious God, you have placed your word of love in the heart of your church. Fill us with compassion that we bear fruit of your healing mercy to the world and our communities, acting as agents of your love in the world. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. You created the earth with seeds sprouting up to new life. We pray for the flourishing of fruit trees and orchards, vines and bushes. Prosper the work of those who plant, tend, harvest, and gather. Help us to tend to your creation and protect parts of it that are threatened. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Show us your ways and be with us as we pave paths of your justice and love. Raise up community and national leaders to challenge and dismantle societal structures that perpetuate ethnic, racial and religious profiling and discrimination. Help give us the courage to actively identify and stand up against injustice in our country, countering violence with peace, hatred with love. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Come near to all in need, orchestrate kindness in the face of cruelty, hope where, is the, where there is despair, love in the face of neglect, comfort where there is death, and healing in illness. We continue to pray today for the well-being of Elaine Rodning and for John and Dorothy Peterson and for ongoing recovery for Court Ockfin and for these others who we name now before you, either silently or aloud. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Turn this community toward neighbors in need. Bring aid and support to those who are poor, beaten down, abused, forgotten, silenced, or avoided. Help us to uplift those in our community who need our help. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. We give thanks for the saints who revealed your love and mercy in this life. Inspired by their witness, strengthen us to live in hope. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. God of every time and place, in Jesus' name, and filled with your Holy Spirit, we entrust these spoken prayers and those in our hearts into your hands. Amen. We affirm our faith now with these words from the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Peace of God be with all of you. You're welcome to share God's peace now with any who may be with you uh, in any way that you are able through our online community as well, remembering that we are all part of this body of Christ together. 
There is now an online form that you can fill out. You'll see it in the chat bar for the online service. And this is very similar to what we pass around during worship on Sunday mornings so that we can remember who's with us. And then it's also a way for you, if you're a visitor, to indicate that, to indicate if you have any interest in um, speaking with one of us. We can do that in person or on the phone or on Zoom, however you'd like to do that. If you'd like to know more about St. Mark's or subscribe to our newsletter, you can use that form that's there in the chat bar, and then we'll follow up with you. And now, one of the things that brings us such great joy as we think about gifts that we're sharing with the community, uh, we're able to take the monetary gifts that, that are brought together and put those to use for the sake of people around us. We've received a lot of monetary gifts for our tiny house building program, also for our mission in Mexico through Lutheran Border Concerns. And just in this last week, we've been able to do both of those things, taking the money that's been given and then offering our own service with that. Some of us went to Mexico and were able to finish building a house for a family and to dedicate that with them last week. And then in this new week, as as you'll see in a moment, we were able to bless a tiny house that was built by members of St. Mark's right here in our community over in Gig Harbor. We thank Martin Duenhalter for uh, giving us a place to build this tiny house on his land. And we'll go there now for the, the blessing of the tiny home, remembering that this is something really that we all uh, take part in together. When God created this land, God blessed it and said that it is good. And when God created you who have built this house on this land, God blessed you and filled you with gifts to share. And so we thank God, our creator, and God in Christ, who gives us the spirit of love and service, and the spirit who has been present all through this time and will continue to be here with all who inhabit this house. I'm going to read the psalm that was on my grandma and grandma's wall in their kitchen, and that has been a song, a psalm that has often been associated with houses where people come and go, remembering that God is there. And in this beautiful setting, we have the Nate creation that's mentioned in the, in the psalm too. So Psalm 121. I lift my eyes to the hills. From where will my help come? My help's come from the Lord who made heaven and earth. The Lord will not let your foot be moved. The one who keeps you will not slumber. The one who keeps Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun shall not strike you by day nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all evil. The Lord will keep your life. The Lord will keep your going out and your coming in from this time forth and forevermore. So maybe those of you who have built the house, um, just a few words about like what's, what it's been like to be out here and sharing this time together and What's it, what it's meant for you? Uh, it's been a real pleasure to, to be here to build this house in this spot. Um, it's so peaceful and quiet out here. We come here in the morning and there's often deer grazing in, in the fields around here and, and, and other animals. We've seen, seen eagles above and uh, it's just quiet, peaceful and, and a pleasure to, pleasure to work in this kind of environment. Well, I'm just very thankful to St. Mark's for supporting this ministry. This is our eighth house that we built. And um, when we consider that people live in it as transitional housing for about three to four months, maybe this one house alone um, over its lifespan of 10 years, we'll see 30 to 40 families uh, that use it and get out of danger. They can go in it, they can lock it. They have a place to put their valuables. They have an address. All of those are essential things for getting your life together and moving forward. Um, and if you multiply that times the eight, then it's even more. Um, and uh, uh, I just think that's such a supportive thing. And we're going to continue with this ministry this summer of building three more houses on St. Mark's property. Um, there's a great team that is being put together already. And uh, that's going to be the last week of, of this month. Uh, last full week and, uh, and followed on the Sunday uh, with a celebration um, and a party 
steps to to mark that event and a blessing uh, then to and all and the whole church is welcome to that. So thankful thankful to Bill and Don especially for his leadership and Barb and Clasant for helping us with the building um, and again to the congregation for supporting it financially. Well, lovely. Well, thank you for letting us come and be a part of this. And the, like I mentioned, the the prayer of blessing has. Um, is uh, inspired by the song, and you will um, be saying the words that are in bold print. God of love, we give you thanks for the gift of building this home together. We ask you to bless, protect, and guide those who inhabit it. May it be a home where your love can dwell and where all can safely live. God of hopes and dreams and visions, May this home be a place where people dare to seek and to dream your reign anew, and symbols of your transforming love and grace for all the world. God of abundance, may this home be a banquet hall on holy ground, where peace and justice meet, and where your love is revealed in time and space. God of compassion, May this home be a place where hands reach beyond the walls to heal and strengthen, serve and teach. God of welcome, may all who come and go from this home see your holy image in themselves and in all people, including outcasts and strangers who bear the image of your face. God of safety and shelter, may this home be a refuge from danger in a place where fear is replaced by hope and trust in the hearts of all who dwell within. God of our whole being, may the tears and cries and laughter and prayers and songs of all who inhabit this home be held in your eternal love and grace. And we say together, let this house proclaim from floor to rafter that all are welcome, all are welcome, all are welcome in this place. Amen. As we come now to this table of grace, we pray, Holy God, you alone are holy and you alone are God. The universe declares your praise beyond the stars, beneath the sea, with every cell, with every breath. Generations bless your faithfulness through the water by night and day, across the wilderness, out of exile, into the future. We give you thanks for Jesus Christ at the heart of human life, near to those who suffer, beside the sinner, among the poor, with us now. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread and gave thanks. And then he blessed it and gave it to them, saying, This is my body given for you. Do this to remember me. Again, after supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks and he offered it to them, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this to remember me. We pray as Jesus taught. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. If you have bread and wine or grape juice in your place of worship, we invite you to receive those now and to share them with anyone with whom you may be worshiping. If you are worshiping on your own this morning, know that you are a part of this body of Christ that gathers in communion. And as we receive these gifts, we remember the body of Christ given for you and the blood of Christ shed for you.
the body and the blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you now and keep you in his grace from this day forth and forever. Amen. As we continue into this week now, I uh, invite you always to keep track of the things that are happening here through our online newsletter, which you can read by going to our St. Mark's website and clicking on the tab there or subscribing to it. And there's all kinds of things happening now that you're welcome to be a part of. We're doing service in the community and opportunities to be together here at St. Mark's, including that tiny house build that we heard about earlier in the service today. So feel free to come and be a part of all of those things as we remember what it means to serve God together as a community of faith. And now as you go on your way, receive this blessing. May God bless you and keep you. May God's face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May God look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of God, our Creator, Christ, our Savior, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. As we leave this place and our days resume and routine ways of our lives are soon, let us hold the image of God's great feast where all are invited to eat. Such inclusive welcome might oft conflict with human leanings to 